Do you know why you are here? Hmm. I believe I do. Hi everybody, this is Forrest for Faulty Lid. Today, we're going to define Zarya's job and discuss what we need to be thinking about in order to execute it. Zarya occupies the off-tank spot in a team composition. She lacks the shielding and space creation that main tanks like Winston and Reinhardt provide. This makes her a complementary tank, rather than one everyone can get behind. For this reason, she should always be played alongside a main tank. Our highest priority as Zarya is always to protect our teammates and fix mistakes. Zarya is a manager of the battlefield. She improves the quality of play of everyone around her by using her bubbles to save lives and support plays. Zarya is also a powerful damage dealer when she gets charged up. It is Zarya's job to obtain charge and put constant damage onto the core of the enemy team as well as anyone we have access to out of position. When Zarya builds her Graviton Surge ultimate, it is Zarya's job to make sure this powerful and valuable ultimate is used to actually win teamfights. She needs to set up good ultimate combos with her teammates and be sure she is ulting at the correct times. Lastly, it is Zarya's job to help form the team shape and play objectives. Zarya is a tank that stands within the death ball. She helps give the team structure by being a member of the core of it and helping to hold the front line. All of these duties boil down to Zarya's role as an enforcer. She is a bully who embodies the idea of, if you want to get to my teammates, you're going to have to go through me first. And you'll pay for it if you do. Her kit is so powerful because it makes everyone on the team more effective in so many ways. Now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. Although she is a tank, Zarya's damage output can rival that of a DPS when she is at high charge. Zarya is one of the few heroes with multiple methods of firing. It raises the question, which is better to use and when? Her left click particle beam deals 75 DPS at zero charge. This doubles to 150 DPS at 100 charge. Zarya's right click bomb deals up to 95 damage to a single target at full charge. However, it has AoE splash damage, so it can of course hit multiple targets at once. At maximum charge, Zarya's right click can do up to 380 damage per magazine to a single target. This is 4 seconds of 95 damage per second. At max charge, Zarya's left click can do up to 750 damage per magazine to a single target. This is 5 seconds of 150 damage per second. When fighting a single target or trying to burn through barriers, Zarya's left click is the superior option. It is the primary fire Zarya should use in a fight. The particle beam may be Zarya's main form of fire, but her bombs still have their uses. Her right click is one of the best tools Zarya has to build her ultimate since she can spam it into groups of enemies at a distance. Her bombs also deal burst damage rather than her beam's damage over time. This can be useful to finish off slippery targets like Tracer or Sombra before they can get away. Zarya's bombs produce a small boop effect as well. This helps disrupt the enemy's aim and can therefore reduce their damage output. It should be noted that right click bombs cost between 1 and 25 ammo. Using one bomb right before your ammo runs out maximizes the damage Zarya can output in a single reload. Lastly, Zarya's right click is useful if you have trouble tracking flankers like Tracer and Genji, though it shouldn't always be relied upon because you do need to get better at tracking them in order to play at a high level. Zarya's damage potential is massive, but it is only potential if we are not good at gaining and maintaining charge. There are two philosophies Zarya players go by in order to accomplish this goal. Some players use the teammate bubble to farm charge and save their personal bubble to protect themselves. I believe the superior philosophy is to use your personal bubble to farm charge and hold your team bubble for saving teammates and making plays. As Zarya, we can control our own actions and keep ourselves safe when our personal bubble is on cooldown. However, we cannot control the actions of our teammates. 
the team bubble allows us to fix team mistakes that we would otherwise have no control over. The team bubble is one of the team's most powerful resources for both making big plays and stopping them. It is not to be wasted farming charge unless it is a calculated risk. In order to build charge, use your personal bubble during the poke phase of team fights. This period occurs when neither team has committed to the fight yet, but damage is already being thrown around. Step in front of your Reinhardt shield, use your bubble, and absorb incoming fire before quickly stepping back into position. If you do this right, you'll walk away with 40 charge to start the fight. It is sometimes possible to use a team bubble to farm charge during the poke phase, especially if the enemy team doesn't look as if they're attacking anytime soon. Just remember that putting your team bubble onto cooldown is risky. Only do it if you think there is little chance you will need your bubble to save a teammate in the next 8 seconds. When you're charged up and your personal barrier is off cooldown, it is time to play aggressively. Push forward and fire onto the enemy's front line or any squishies that are out of position. Use your personal bubble during this aggression to protect yourself and rack up even more charge. This can be devastating to the enemy team. Getting good charge from Zarya's bubble is important, but never forget it is a reward for performing our primary job of protection. Our bubbles need to have value because they are saving teammates or allowing their actions to be completed successfully. Farming charge is a secondary goal. This raises the question, how do we use our bubbles to perform our protection duty effectively? Before we dive in and go over the specifics of using our barriers, we need to go over two general rules to follow. Number one, when we use barriers to block fire, we do so when ourself or an ally is actively being fired upon. A moment too soon or a moment too late makes our barrier useless. If you do not already have allied health bars turned on, they definitely need to be on to play this hero. Watching them will help you get the timing of barrier placement right, as well as point out any allies that might need the barrier more than others. Number two, we need to get as much value as possible out of every single bubble. Wasting bubbles is the mark of a bad Zarya player. They need to be held onto until the exact moment they are needed. Do not use them just because they are available or because they just came off of cooldown. Quality is far more important than quantity. Zarya's e-bubble is her most valuable resource besides Graviton Surge. There are two types of reasons to use it. You're either supporting team actions or you're making saves. Here's a few examples of when bubbles should be used to support team plays. Bubbling a Reinhardt when he charges. Bubbling a Roadhog when he hooks, especially when he hooks another Roadhog. Winston when he dives. And bubbling allies when they use their ultimates, such as Farah's Rocket Barrage. Here's a few examples of when bubbles should be used to make saves. Bubbling people who are hooked by Roadhog or charged by Reinhardt. Blocking incoming fire, especially on squishy allies. Preventing boops like Farah's Concussive Blast. Protecting people who find themselves out of position. Cleansing Biotic Grenade's anti-heal effect off of allies. And removing Discord Orb from vulnerable targets. As you can see, there are a lot of uses and demands for Zarya's team bubble. However, we only have one bubble every 8 seconds. So how do we determine what's most important? Bubble priority changes depending on both our team composition and the enemy's team composition. I have some general rules to help you figure out where your focus needs to be and who will probably need team bubbles the most. However, keep in mind that none of these are hard and fast rules. If you see a teammate who is in mortal danger, then using your bubble to save them now is typically better than holding for the future danger you're preparing for. In the event that neither team composition has flankers or divers, we can expect that damage will be at its most predictable. Our backline will most likely not need bubbles at a moment's notice. In these scenarios, Zarya can put extra priority of focus onto our team's Reinhardt. Use bubbles to allow Reinhardt to be more aggressive. Bubble him when he fire strikes, charges, or cleaves his hammer around at the enemy team. You can also use it when he drops his shield to give him a couple seconds of protected relief. 
This can help you edge out an advantage in the shield battle if you coordinate with him. Keep in mind, we don't want to use our bubble just because our Reinhardt is performing one of these actions. When you see these actions, quickly decide if your bubble would be valuable enough to warrant putting it on cooldown for 8 seconds. It's pretty much always worth it when your Reinhardt is charging, but perhaps not worth it if your Reinhardt is just fire striking and the enemy Reinhardt doesn't have an earth shatter. There are a couple of major exceptions to bubble priority when neither team has flankers. If the enemy team has a Roadhog, then we need to be saving our bubbles for when he hooks. Be patient, hogs hook eventually, and we want our bubble to be ready when he does. The other exception is for allies that stand outside the death ball. If we have a Soldier 76 on high ground and not behind our Reinhardt, then we should keep an eye on him to shield him at a moment's notice. Again, bubbles are always best used when making saves or helping teammates make fight winning plays. These priorities are just to help give you some direction. Bubbles may be needed elsewhere at any given time and should be used when they are needed. In the event that our team has divers or flankers, then we pay extra attention to them in order to protect them during their aggression. Use your bubbles when Winstons, Tracers, Genjis, or Pharahs dive into combat or you see that they're in trouble. Exercise patience when bubbling flankers. They are shifty targets on their own and won't always need your barrier just because they're in the enemy's face. Try to save your bubble for a moment where you think they slipped up and are about to take damage. Again, giving priority to flankers and divers is just an extra focus to keep in mind. All normal bubble protection duties still apply. When the enemy team has divers or flankers, and we don't, then let your team know you're saving your bubbles for when divers attack. Use your barriers to protect supports and DPS heroes who are targeted in the dive. You can, of course, put your bubbles onto tanks who get dived, but squishies have extra priority because of their low health pool. Unlike tanks, they can be knocked out very quickly. Our job is to block that knockout, peel the divers off of our team, and snowball the fight back into our favor. In the event multiple allies are dived at once, single target healers like Mercy, Ana, and Zenyatta have the highest bubble priority. Keeping them alive will help the whole team survive. When both teams have either divers or flankers, then this is the trickiest scenario of all because damage is at its most unpredictable. Lethal damage can be sudden, come from any direction, and fights can devolve quickly into chaos. The best thing you can do in these scenarios is prioritize squishy targets like your healers and DPS. You'll have to use your best judgment on whether it's better to use your bubble on a diver or better to use your bubble on someone who has been dived. The answer can be different from game to game and from fight to fight. It is our job to find the best solution in the moment. To help you out with this triage, here's how we can think about it. If your supports or non-divers keep dying before your divers do enough to win the fight, then they need your bubble. If divers keep getting wrecked while your healers struggle to get enough healing on them in time, then your divers need your bubble. There are no hard and fast rules here. It's an ongoing cost-benefit analysis that has to happen in an instant. The more experience you have with making these judgment calls, the more you will see their outcomes. Learning from your mistakes and successes is paramount to improving the skill of bubble priority. As Zarya, when we think about bubbling someone, we have to keep in mind there is an opportunity cost. Using your bubble on someone now means you won't be able to bubble anyone for the next 8 seconds. We have to be very careful tossing both our team bubble and personal bubble around when it's not vital because some heroes will wait for barriers to be on cooldown and then capitalize on it. Here are some examples of heroes that want to bait out your shields. Roadhog so he can land a hook and successfully follow up on it. Reinhardt so he can successfully land a charge or an earth shatter. Ana, so she can hit your team with a biotic grenade without you being able to cleanse it, and Tracer, so she can stick a pulse bomb without you blocking it. It is important to keep these scenarios in mind and try not to be baited into using your bubble at a time that it isn't necessary. If you know they have a Roadhog, then do your best to hold E until a teammate is hooked. 
only use it for other purposes when a teammate would have otherwise died or when a teammate is making a fight winning play. That way, you won't regret it. Like our team bubble, we need to also think about how to get the most value out of our personal bubble. As I mentioned earlier, it is a great tool for farming charge and that can be done relatively safely during the poke period of a fight. However, it can provide much more utility than simply powering up our gun. Personal barriers can and should be used to body block for teammates. This is especially useful to protect teammates when our team bubble is on cooldown. We can also use our team bubble to temporarily tank enemy abilities. Whether it's 76's Visor, Ferris Barrage, Reaper's Death Blossom, or Genji's Dragon Sword, our personal bubble can block some damage from hitting our teammates and give us a window to kill the enemy who's ulting. This can be a match deciding play. We also want to use our personal bubble when we are healing blocked and in danger. Just note that we should let healing block's duration expire on its own if we are in a safe position. The same goes for Discord Orb. As Zarya, your personal bubble is your best tool for being aggressive. It puts enemies in a no-win situation. Either they take damage from you helplessly, or they fire at your bubble which charges you up and allows you to perform more damage. Most of the time, enemies can't help but shoot your bubble if you time your activation with the moment they try to protect themselves from your aggression. Lastly, and perhaps one of the most important priorities for our personal bubble, is blocking Earth Shatters. Blocking Reinhardt's ultimate is not just your Reinhardt's job. You need to be his insurance policy. If you know a shatter is coming, you need to save your bubbles and try to block it. If you block it with your personal bubble, then everyone behind you will be saved. You can predict Earth Shatters by both reacting to the wind-up animation and shielding in time, as well as by reading that the body language of the enemy Reinhardt is becoming extra aggressive. Graviton Surge is one of the most powerful ultimates in the game. It is also one of the slowest ones to charge. Because of this, each ultimate needs to be treated like gold. Wasting a single surge can easily be the factor that loses a match. The speed at which we build our ultimate is a big measure for what separates a good Zarya from a great one. At low charges, it can take over 2 minutes to build ult. At high charges, it can be done very quickly. This is one of the reasons why getting good bubbles off is so important. Zarya's right click is a great tool to build ultimate with. Spam it into chokes, off of high grounds, and into groups of enemies when you have the chance. Just remember that the spam builds the enemy support ultimates as well, so you should only spam when you're building your ultimate or you think it'll lead directly to kills. If the enemy team has a D.Va, then seek her out and build surges off of her. You can break D.Va's mech faster than just about anyone in the game, so not only are you building your ult charge, but you're also providing your team a valuable service. Winston and Roadhog can be great targets to build alt off of as well. When you're high charge, you can melt away their large health pools, which will translate to fast graviton surges. Once we've built up our ultimate, we need to do some work to prepare to use it. It is our job as Zarya to make sure our team can combo with our graviton. If the people in your ultimate are not killed, it is probably your fault for either not informing the team or for firing it at a bad time or location. In voice comms, announce to your team that you are looking to use Graviton Surge at the start of the next fight. If you want someone to combo their ultimate with yours, tell them at this time to hold it for you. Also announce any special conditions for success that you might need from your team. For example, if you're on defense and you're coming up to a fight where Surge is your only ultimate, then you're probably going to have to use it regardless of whether or not you have an ultimate to combo with it. In these scenarios, let your team know that they need to focus extra on putting damage into the Surge. If you have an Ana, tell her to save Biotic Grenade and use it on the Graviton. If you have a Reinhardt, tell him to charge the enemy Reinhardt out of the Surge so that the squishies are exposed. Executing a teamfight winning Surge is still possible even without an ultimate to combo with it. Make sure your team is aware of what they need to do to make the ultimate work. As part of preparing our ultimate, we need to know the conditions of what can make our ultimate fail. 
Barriers, Diva's Defense Matrix, Lucio's Sound Barrier, Zenyatta's Transcendence, May's Wall, Genji's Deflect, and Mercy's Resurrection can all counter Zarya's ultimate or make it less effective. Be sure you have a way of dealing with them before you ult. For example, if you know Transcendence is coming, make sure you're comboing with something that has burst damage like Tracer's Pulse Bomb, or that Ana knows to save her Biotic Grenade for the Surge. When all of the preparation is out of the way, it's time to execute our ultimate. First off, we need to answer the question, how many people do we need to capture in our Surge? The answer is simple, enough to win the fight. Typically, if we can get two important heroes in our ultimate and kill them while our team is still at full strength, then we have done enough to win it. Ideally, we want to get everyone in our Graviton Surge, but if we kill enough to snowball the fight and easily win it, then it really doesn't matter. Prioritize key, squishy members of the enemy team like supports and DPS. Keep in mind that some heroes can escape Graviton Surge, so don't count on them staying inside if you ult them. Diva, Tracer, Genji, Reaper, Reinhardt, Widowmaker, Mercy, Sombra, Mei, and Orisa all have ways of escaping or surviving Surge. If you're looking to get at least two heroes, then don't count any of these in your total. As a special note, when you know Mercy has res, you should always try to trap her in your Surge. This can be difficult though, because if someone is outside the Surge, then she can fly to them. You have to try and get all six of their team in the Surge, which is not always possible. Mercy can also fly to the body of a dead teammate, and there is literally nothing you can do about that. When dealing with Mercy, you'll either have to find a way to kill her in the Surge to prevent res, or use Surge right after she uses res. A common problem I see with Zarya's executing their ultimate is that they wait too long before using their Surge. As Zarya, we want to use our ultimate as early in the fight as conditions allow. Ideally, we get them as they're grouped up and walking into the fight, if possible. If not, we want to meet conditions such as breaking Diva's mech as quickly as possible and then drop our surge. On defense, this concept is especially important. Don't allow the enemy team to come into your objective and start dropping their ultimates on you. Beat them to the punch. Enemy abilities can also cue us as to when our ultimate should be used, especially if we acquired our ultimate in the middle of a fight. If the enemy team uses Zen Ult, Lucio Ult, or a Mercy Res, it may be time to use your ultimate the moment these abilities are ending. That way, the enemy team will be grouped up and will have already used the ability that would have saved them from the Surge. Just remember, only use your Surge in these circumstances if the fight is still winnable when the enemy's ability is ending. If it's not, then just save your Surge for next time. Additionally, make sure you announce to your team that you are surging once an ability like Transcendence is over. You need everyone to be ready. When we are looking to fire our Graviton Surge, it is important that we do not give away what we are trying to do by having overly aggressive body language. Standing in front of your team is a dead giveaway that we're trying to use our ultimate. This will cause smart teams to spread out and reduce your ultimate's effectiveness. Try to be sneakier. Either fire the Surge from an angle they won't expect, or ask a Lucio to speed boost you up to their team. When our Surge is out, it's time for the fun part, finishing the enemy. The best thing you can do as Zarya is make sure the highest priority targets don't survive the Surge. You should do this by firing your left click beam at those targets. Typically, your right click either kills everyone in the Surge or no one. It's best to guarantee high priority kills on healers, so you know that even if people survive the surge, you'll still win the fight. Last but not least, it is crucial that you use your team bubble on whichever member of your team you ask to combo with you. If Farah is comboing Rocket Barrage with you, then you do not want her getting slept, stunned, or killed, which will result in your team wasting two valuable ultimates. Try to save your bubble for whoever is comboing with you. It can sometimes be worth waiting an extra couple of seconds before ulting just to get team bubble off of cooldown. There's a lot you have to think about when using Graviton Surge, but the reward is worth it. When executed correctly, it makes team fights a free win. Mastering this execution is vital to playing Zarya. The last thing we need to know in order to perform Zarya's job is how to position her. 
As Zarya, we have a constant ongoing battle with positioning. We want to be both on the front line dealing damage to their team, and we also want to be backed up to the point where we can see our whole team in the whole battlefield. That way we can see where our bubbles and damage are needed. Zarya has the problem of wanting to be in two places at once. The solution to this dilemma? Go back and forth. Alternate between pressing the front line and dropping back a bit to look around and refresh our information on our teammates' positions. That way, we can be both a frontline tank and also protect our team. This back and forth is a dynamic process with no hard and fast rules about when to do either. It is a judgment call and something that can only be improved through experience. Knowing what and where our highest bubble priority is at any given time can help us with this judgment. To help you out, here's a general tip you can follow that can give you some direction. When you're low charge, hang back a bit more. You can provide more value to your team by landing a key shield than by outputting minimal DPS. When you're high charge, press forward onto the enemy team if you can. Break barriers and lay down fire. They will have to deal with you or face the consequences. To close out this guide, we're going to go over three common mistakes I see the most with Zarya positioning. Playing too close to the front line all of the time. These players don't turn around or fall back to get a view of the entire battlefield often enough. This leads to bad bubbles and missed bubbles. Diving in at enemies as if Zarya wields a shotgun. Zarya's beam works up to 16 meters. You want to use all of that distance. The further the target is, the easier they are to track. Getting up too close to squishies for no reason just makes our life harder and is often more dangerous. Getting caught out of position. Players often overestimate the safety that a personal barrier provides. Use caution when being aggressive. Zarya is very slow and it takes time to get back to safety when you're caught out. To recap, Zarya has four main duties in her job description. Protect teammates and fix mistakes. Deal damage onto the enemy team. Set up fight winning ultimates. And help form the team shape plus contest objectives. There's a lot to keep track of to accomplish these duties. We need to execute our bubble priorities for both our team bubble and our personal bubble. Gain and maintain charge. Identify the conditions required for a successful graviton surge. Organize our team to meet those conditions. Balance positioning between frontlining and surveying. Playing Zarya is not easy. If all this intimidates you, don't let it. These skills will all develop over time and you'll get better at keeping track of all the variables involved. Even good Zarya's once started out as a potato. Build these skills and someday you'll be a dominant manager of teamfights. That's all for this role guide. I hope it helps you understand Zarya's job and work to execute it at a high level. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Faulty Lid now has its own Discord server, so if you enjoy talking about Overwatch or want people to play with, then you should come check it out. Thanks for watching, this has been Forrest with Faulty Lid, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.